So my name is Mandy, and my story of um, really embracing the God that I love, the God who sees me, began with foster care. Uh, my husband and I found out we couldn't have kids, and we thought, okay, that's all right, we'll make a plan. We're gonna jump into foster care and hope to adopt, but also we're open to whatever God needs us to do. Along that journey, um, I had to surrender so much, so much about the dreams that I thought it was gonna look like, what was gonna happen, um, the control that I thought that I had. At one point, even the children I thought that would stay, and just all of the little pieces that I just had to slowly let go of and trust God and say, I know that what you're doing is better than anything I imagined, and I'm gonna keep surrendering this to you because I trust you, um, but sometimes feeling a little blind and a little lost in that too thinking, does he even see? Does anyone see what happens behind the closed doors of my home? The service, the thing that I'm giving, that I'm pouring my heart into is so invisible and no one really gets it, but does he even see me? And sometimes those dreams were things that I didn't even dare to say out loud. They were the things that, yes, Lord, I trust you, but I don't even know if I dare to ask for the baby of my heart's desire, for one adoption day for all of my kids. Um, then COVID happened, so the dream of even being in the courthouse and experiencing experiencing adoption day with the gavel and the judge and all of those pieces, um, I almost didn't dare ask for. And when I had surrendered all of the things and I said, okay, Lord, it's not the adoption day that I had hoped for, but I trust you. And it's not the journey that I thought this was gonna be, but I trust you. He lined it up. And it was the most beautiful, amazing thing. Our cases, we had two separate open cases. All of the things started to fall into place at the same time. And when one case had gone appeal after appeal after appeal, the judge said, no more. There will be not another appeal. This is finished. And the parents on the other case said, we want you. And we don't want anyone else. And we, we want the kids in your home. And it was their voice that brought kids back to us that no one else could have brought home because the state had a different plan. And all of these little things that came into place, and then COVID, the, the courthouse opened that summer. The numbers had gone down enough that they were gonna do in-person adoptions that summer. And so when we got to that courthouse, <laughs> with our masks, with our matching shirts, um, it was just so phenomenal to sit there with my family, with a Zoom screen up on the wall that my friends were gonna join. And I was just so excited. Everything was just hustling and bustling. And I looked around and I looked up at that Zoom screen where my friends were gonna be. <laughs> and of all the random Microsoft screensavers that day, it was Flamingos. And Flamingos had come to represent foster care to me. Um, flamingos <laughs> in the salt flats of Africa, the little baby chicks, get salt shackles that build up on their legs and there are flock mamas that come behind and they help care for all these little baby chicks and get them out to the sea where the water then dissolves the salt. And is that not exactly what we were doing, right? Me and my group of friends uh, who are all foster adoptive mamas were, were coming along these little trauma kids and trying to help them out to sea. And so the flamingos just really became a representation of flocking together and fostering and caring for these chicks that other people had abandoned. And so when I saw those flamingos, I just wept. Because no one would have known. No one at the courthouse could have known that that was our thing. And so to see that, it was the God who saw me. And it was the God who saw all of the little things that I couldn't dare ask out loud. But He knew. And He had placed those desires on my heart. And when they came together, it was so incredibly powerful. It was the God who saw me. So our family now is four beautiful daughters. Uh, two are 14 and they're in eighth grade. And then the younger two are almost five and just turned six. So preschool and kindergarten. Um, they've all been home and adopted for three years now. And it's been a wild ride even post adoption and absolutely messy, but beautiful. And I still get together with all my Flamingo Mama friends and we still do life together. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful treasure.